Alrighty, so this um, exercise or lesson is designed to get you acquainted with the dynamic of applying the color, okay, and getting used to um, strategizing about um, using the water in relationship to um, the amount of pigment, okay, and the interaction of color, okay, on the page uh, within a design, right? So, and we're going to implement kind of a fun and interesting uh, technique here. We're going to be using wax pencils, okay, to um, draw our design. The wax pencil resists uh the the water and the color right so um it it sort of delineates some shapes and provides some form to work with okay this it's not meant to be used as a paint by number or anything like that but it's 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 used to establish a design okay and to interact with it right and so we're going to be um using our palette our limited palette with uh, yellow red and blue right and um we're going to use these wax pencils to draw our design as i explained right and so i have a blue yellow black red and white uh wax pencil and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um get a piece of paper out here we're going to tape down a sheet of paper okay um okay here we are we want to practice this exercise twice, right? So we're going to uh, divide this page into two areas, okay? Let's tape it down again. Uh, we discussed the reason for taping, right? It makes a nice neat edge, and it also helps manage the, the, the paper, keep it flat best as possible, right? Because as it absorbs water, the paper takes on a life of its own, starts to buckle and do all kinds of cool things. Okay, so, and we're going to, again, divide the page into two equal areas. Okay, and right about there. Okay, okay, so this lesson is, is designed, again, to begin to get acquainted with picture making and um, understanding um, the, the, the levels of, of moisture with regard to the level of pigment, you know, begin to get the colors to interact and so forth. So the full dynamic, right? And so these designs that you're going to do, they're all personal. It's, it's you. This is not meant to be, you know, follow what I'm doing, but I'm just going to begin to draw out a design. Okay. And, um, it, and, and it's up to you to um, create your own personal design. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drawing okay create some sort of abstract okay composition okay and let's see what happens right so and we're thinking ahead a little bit how this is all going to look how it's all going to present itself right so um let's try another color for now that's enough blue for now, right? And so now you remember that these colors, right, the wax pencil will survive the water and the and the the, the color, okay? Okay. Right, so we're trying to create some kind of exciting design. Okay, some sort of interaction. Okay, and I love to use the white because what, what happens with the white is um, as, as the color goes down, right, the white survives. It kind of creates a little surprise as we're putting the color down. Okay, so, so we want to put, you want to use these these pencils strategically, 
right? I want to create these focal points. So I love to tell a little story with the drawing. Um, so that wax pencil is very delicate. So it broke, so. It requires quite a bit of pressure to establish it. Right? And you kind of have to envision the, the white coming through a little bit. Okay, let's do a little more. Oh, how about a little bit of red, right? So uh, the red, again, maybe change the direction of the line. Okay. So you want to create some sort of abstract design and we're going to work the color within it. Okay. some of that covering okay maybe use a little more of that blue change the shapes a little bit A repetition of motif there, right? So we can have certain language in the drawing that we want to reveal. Combination of objects, right? Some people like to create patterns, right? Um, I'm, I like to do a little bit more freeform kind of a thing. Okay, that's okay. Right. But it's it's truly um, the time to do something very personal, free flowing. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that so far. We don't want to get too crazy. Okay, and so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make sure we have our water ready to go. Okay, I'm going to put away our wax pencils. Right. Um, these are wax pencils, right? So we're going to put those away for now. Okay, we're going to now um, start to colorize that composition. Okay. Hmm. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wet the surface as usual, right? And we what we want to do is we want to work soft in the beginning, right? So, um, and we're going to work soft. Uh, we're not going to, uh, you know, like fill into the edge. We're going to try to work past things right now in the beginning. And while things are wet, they're going to be soft. And as uh, the page dries, the, the, the paint will go down sharper and that kind of a thing. That's what we're looking for, the experience of all that, right? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, and in, in this particular case, I like to use the nebulizer, the, the spray, the spray to get some water down, right? And then um, spread it nicely with my 
brush. Okay. Okay, so we've got a nice amount of water on there. Okay, and so let's lay out our color, right? So I'm going to lay out some of my fresh red. Okay. Some fresh yellow. Okay. And some blue. We're running out of blue, but I think we have enough to do this painting. Okay. There we go. And some blue. Okay. All right. And so remember we spoke about the role of color, right? And this is where we start to see this, right? So what I'm going to do is since cool colors recede, I'm going to start with our cool color, our blue. Okay. And we are using all three primary colors in this composition, right? So these compositions are primary or prismatic colors, right? Composition, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to implement my blue and see how it's bleeding into the water. And that's what we want to do. We want to just let it bleed and do its thing, right? Beautiful. And I'm just gliding the brush over it, right? And the water is really, it's almost like the water is a vehicle for, for the distribution of the color, right? And so what I'm keeping in mind is that the, the um, application of the subsequent colors are going to interact and create those secondary colors, okay? And that's what we want to do. Okay. See the way that bleeds. Beautiful. Nice. Okay. Okay. And I think that I'm going to stop with my blue at this point. I think I'm going to just maybe touch in and increase the value in a couple places. In other words, um, a little denser blues in certain areas. Okay. And I'm anticipating that this blue is going to interact, right, with my subsequent colors. Okay, nice. Okay, very good, right? So at this point, we want to take the uh, the um, hair dryer, dry it a little bit. But I see that um, there's a couple places here where there's large pools of water. So we can manage that by creating a little wick. Okay, right? And we can pick up some of these pools of water pools of water and color, right, without compromising the painting. Make these little wicks of, and you lightly pick up the color. Okay, and so now what we want to do while it's wet, 
I want to get my secondary uh, color, my next color in there. And I'm going to use yellow, okay? And I'm anticipating, right, not only the yellow working for us, but the yellow is going to integrate, okay, with the blue to get our secondary color, right? So I'm using pure prismatic color, okay? And I'm going to do the same as I did with the, okay, and the areas that have blue in it. See the way it's interacting and it's creating that green? That's what we want. Okay. And now I'm thinking, as, as I'm going to put the red down, right, it's going to create an orange. So interacting with the, with the yellow. And then when the red interacts with the blue, it's going to create a violet or a purplish color. So these are the things, the kind of things you have to think about. So we're thinking ahead. Okay. Right, so I'm just working on the composition. I'm trying to foresee how things are going to work out. Okay, getting there. Okay, so let's see how things go now, right? So now I'm going to take the hairdryer, right? And there are pools of water right now. I'm going to use a little bit of my paper towel again to manage that. Okay. Right, so this application is the soft application, right? And you'll see when, when we put the paint down onto this, once this is dry, the characteristics of the, um, the graphic characteristic of that application will be much sharper, okay? Okay, just working neatly here.
All right. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to apply some of our red. Okay. And this is the soft application. So the, the paper is still fairly wet. Okay. I didn't dry the paper too much. Okay. So let's, let's first, um, apply a little bit of the red. Okay. Strategically. Now red's very strong, so it's going to, you know, it's going to do all kinds of things. See how it's interacting with the other colors, it's beautiful. So we're keeping this application nice and soft, creating those oranges and things. Now I can kind of draw a little bit with it. There's where my purples are showing up. Integrating the color, right? Bringing it together. And you can see those secondary, the purples showing up and all that, right? <clears throat> Right? So it's like these transparent layers of color. Notice how I'm not doing the paint by number thing. I'm letting things, I'm drawing past things with the paint. Delicately going over. All right, so now let's 
really dry it and go to the next stage, right? We have to remind ourselves what the purpose of the um, exercise is. It's to begin to understand the relationship of the wet aspect and the dry aspect, right? So um, up to now, we were working very wet. Now the painting is quite dry, right? And our application of color is going to be um, fairly sharp, okay? I'm going to implement a brush that is more precise. I've cleaned up my palette. I've gotten uh, fresh water. I've got my paper uh, towel now, okay? And I've got my color wheel, and you can see all the prismatic colors, right? Your violets, yellows, oranges, greens, right? And blues, violets, okay? So you see all these colors appearing, right? Okay, and we used three colors initially, right? Our primary. So let's take a look at what things are gonna look like if I um, implement some solid color. Okay, I'm going to work with my blue. We're gonna work blue in between and reinforce some of these shapes and forms. Compositionally, we like to have you know, the things that are defined, all right? So um, now is where I can come up to the edge of things and and um, and begin to uh, work the magic, right? So now see how sharp that is laying down, the sharpness of that application of color, okay? And I'm, I'm using it as a shape creating a shape. Okay, and I'm, I'm looking here, I'm carrying that blue, okay, over and overlapping the, the orange with it, and it's gonna create a achromatic color, right? The blue and the orange are, and see how that's looking very gray? So there's the strategy, right? All of a sudden we're seeing how the relationship of these colors works out, right? So I'm going to continue, right? I'm going to define that a little bit, right? Nice and sharp. Look how sharp that edge is, right? Nice and sharp. Okay. Now let's look. And as I paint there, right? As I put that blue in, look how bright these colors are becoming, right? So it's it's constantly revealing color, okay? Now, so let's watch this, okay? Um, okay, let's lay in a, a pretty sharp shape here, right up to the edge of this. Now that's... Just a small shape there, but it's going to bring me, and I can right away create other shapes by drawing around things, right? Now you can see where I'm going with this, right? I'm picking up that. I'm, gonna, I'm going to paint around things. And I'm creating a sharp definition. See? I'm working with the movement, okay? Now my, let's see how that blue going over the orange there, that's creating that, that achromatic color, right? It's more like a gray. And when it dries back, it's gonna, you're gonna really see it, okay?
and as this cool color goes down, okay, these darker blue value, right? As I put this down here, it's making these areas brighter. And what if I put some of that blue over the red? Look at that, it makes that purple. Right, I'm defining the shapes again. And see how the cool color recedes and the hot colors jump out at us. Okay. All right. Again, I'm gonna work with the blue again. All right, so I'm seeing some interesting the interaction of these shapes. There's like a collision going on here, right? There's a little bit of a story told, right? So when you're drawing initially, you wanna foresee that. You wanna tell a story in your, in your painting, right? And so I chose to create this collision. Some people like to create, have a tendency for creating patterns, you know, which is wonderful. I love patterns, okay? Right, define that sort of burst shape there. It's cool. I want to inter interact that. Maybe deepen that little area there around to find that. See how that white wax. Pencil, remember we spoke about that? It's cool the way it appears. Okay. Change the style of brush stroke. Right. Create a different dynamic there. Change the direction of the brush stroke. It's all good. All right. And you can see how this the application of this color is really pulling the composition together. Okay, now let's try to, a little bit of yellow maybe, some straight on yellow, just to reinforce things, a little more saturated here where I'm going to use some red later, okay, a little more saturation of yellow, I'm going to move around to the red. And red is where we can make some punctuations to the composition, right? Uh, with, characteristically with the red. Um, so what if we created a little, like a, a little sharp, look how sharp that is because the page is dry, right? All right, it's a little focal point there. See how sharp that is? Uh, we can integrate it a little bit. Loosen it up. I just took a little water.
just water. Right, push it around a little bit. Created a nice sharp area there. Okay. Kind of reminds me of the circus painting, right? A little bit of fun. Had some, see how those sharp elements next to the soft elements creates a sense of depth, right? Depth the soft versus the sharp. Okay, that's what you want. See, if you just use water, it kind of reactivates some of the color, which is good. All right, so there you go. There's our first composition, okay? Um, so we, we worked from soft. You see the soft aspects and then the sharper aspects, okay? I, can, I see things that, you know, the composition becomes more and more solid as you start to uh, revisit it. And knock back some of that yellow a little bit. Okay. All right, so let's uh, clean up the palette here a little bit. Okay, so here we go. We're going to create another composition. So this one is kind of flowy and all that. Let's create something that has a little bit, uh, a little bit more rigid. But I like that, the organic aspect, the, the round versus the straight, the juxtaposition of things, right? And a good design should always tell a story, right? So let's see what we can do. We can tell a story. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking maybe this representing motion. Okay. These are all interaction and emotion in the composition.
And it's always important to spend a little time, think through your design, because, you know, the, the, the drawing and the painting, in terms of inspiration, if, if it's designed poorly or there's no interest in it, it's not going to be fun to do. You want to be able to do something where you can foresee, okay, some sort of uh, story, some sort of excitement, okay? So these kinds of little motifs or the language in the drawing is important. Okay. Okay, I'm actually good with this, right? Okay. Alrighty, so there's our drawing, okay? And now we're going to um, make sure that our palette's clean, our water's good, right? Uh, and we're gonna put our pencils away for now. Okay, we're going to wet down our page and um, I need a little bit of a, a shield. All right, I don't want to ruin that. So I'm spraying down some water. And I'm going to spread my water nicely. Oops, that's okay. Okay, and so this time, okay, so we're going to, again, we're gonna start with our cool color in the background. We're gonna keep in mind that we're working very wet, which graphically means soft. That's our first, first stage, okay. Okay. We're going to create a little atmosphere here, right? Suggest air in the drawing. Okay. The blue suggests air. Okay. 
which is good. So I'm working in the distance, right? You can see it. Supporting the color, supporting the shapes rather with the color. Just reinforcing what I've done a little bit, deepening the valleys. Creating a sense of motion. Okay. Now let's um, clean up the palette a little bit. We want to make sure we're using pure color, right? We're using our prismatic colors, right? My next color is going to be the yellow. Okay, so the yellow is uh, has a lot of energy in it. And um, we're going to degrade it. You can see the greens, the secondary colors showing up, right? Look at this cloud effect, right? When it, when it's wet. Interest, bringing interest, different kind of marks, transitions. OK. 
Okay. And all these applications so far are going to be soft when it dries back. Okay. All right, now we're going to um, push back our yellow and introduce the red. And then we're going to dry it because we're still in the soft stages here. Okay, so let's take a look at our red. What can we do with the red? Now, I'm going to use the red very delicately in this particular case, right? So maybe almost quite watered down initially, right? And I want to see what happens here with this. Yeah. The way that the yellow wax pencil is now starting to show through, see it? That's what we want. Violet there with the blue. Pink. Integrating the color.
sharper brush for this. Oh, getting ahead of myself. So this is um, okay. So now let's let's dry this. Okay. Um, going to push around a little more red. Right, these soft areas. Soft areas, right? Create that violet. Okay, so this is the soft stage, right? Now we're going to um, implement the um, hair dryer a little bit. Okay, and here we go. Okay, so now we have this nice and dry, and we can um, begin to work um, in our dry mode, okay? So that means adding detail. Um, we're gonna grab a uh, more, uh, how'd you say, a smaller brush, right? For more precision. And so, here we go. So I'm going to start working with some of the, uh, the detail, uh, okay? Let's, and now you can see that the application, the sharpness is is there. The water's not there to um, interact with the pigment, right? So the the, um, the paint goes down nice and strong uh, graphically. Okay, alrighty, All right. So I'm carrying over these motifs. Okay, so. Alrighty. Sharpening things up, not everywhere, just where I feel like it needs it. <clears throat> okay, punctuate the design a little bit out here with that red. Okay, and now I want to start overlapping my colors, like putting the red over the blue to deepen the, uh, and create those secondary colors. See, as I put that red layer over the blue, it's gonna be violet. And now I'm working with the design and enhancing the shape, all right? You can do all kinds of interesting things. Thin layer over the top of that blue creates that violet. Cool. Okay.
enhancing things, right? <clears throat> Creating interest, some detail. Okay, maybe I'm work a little bit with my my blue. Right? And you can see where the soft effects of the water color, look at that, it looks like smoke or something like that, right? And so here we're going to just, oops, I want to be using my pure primary color, the blue. I'm going to deepen towards the middle here. Create some interest. Oh, and I, I'm going to add a little bit more blue to my palette. I'm running a little low. Okay. And so if we want to add some real fine detail, you get a small, get your real fine brush, right? Uh, we can get in there and... Um, add some very fine detail, right? So we're working first very general, working in, in a wet mode, right? And then as the painting dries, right, we're able to add detail, enhance, etc. All right. Deepening the values within the design. using denser values of color, right? Right? And so you can see how the hot colors come forward and the, the cool colors recede in the design, right? So this is very important to, uh, 
to understand that dy that dynamic and utilize that as you're um, creating your design, right? Keeping that in mind, okay? Add some interest. Working with the design itself and embellishing it and completing the story. Okay, there we go. Just deepening it a little bit. Okay, and there we go, right? So, so we have two compositions here done, okay, with, um, with our three primary colors, um, starting with our uh, a wet working mode, and then um, drying it, and then working in a dry working mode, right? So there's two different modes of working, wet and dry, okay? And obviously water can be introduced at any time, as well as more pigment, right? But the general understanding is, is that there's two different working modes, right? And the, the purpose of this exercise is to experience that, right? The working modes, wet and dry. Okay. Right, and you can see how the wax pencil plays a role, right? Um, and there you go. So let's let's take a look at the uh, the designs, right? We can remove our uh, our paper. Our oops, our uh, see. This is where it runs into problems. Remove our tape. Right, we want to be real careful not to rip the paper and ruin the integrity of the of the drawing. Right, so carefully removing the tape. Um, okay. Okay, so let's review a little bit on this. Right, so we had. Um, divided the page into two areas, right? Uh, we're uh, working with a wax pencil resist technique. You can see the effects of the white um, wax pencil and the yellow and the blue, right? And we're creating, we created a, an abstract design using three colors, right? Our primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Okay, and our application was uh, pure in the sense that we did not mix the colors um, on the palette. We mixed the colors on the painting itself, right? And our first mode of working was a wet mode, right? And then our second mode of working was a dry mode, okay? So um, this lesson is to get you oriented into um, um, mixing the color, uh, working uh, with forms, right, that you create. Um, and the, the, the forms are abstract, non-representational, right? But you can see how things begin to define themselves in different ways, right? And so, um, so this is our um, primary color. wax pencil composition. Okay.
Okay. Very good.